look at the leading. Here we go. Hello, tape recorder. This is New Year's Eve, 1988. We are at the Cook's house. We are listening to good, great jazz, and we're going to be talking about the olden days in Clark County jazz. And we have around the table a number of jazz men who will introduce themselves. I want you to each introduce yourself with more than one word. I don't want you to say I'm Al Miller. Because the people who have to transcribe this will be terribly confused when your voice sounds like his voice or his voice sounds like your voice. So give a couple of sentences about yourself, please, and what your, what your history of jazz has been in the county. Start with you, Al. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any grape coupon? Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Well, as far as my jazz, <clears throat> this is Al Miller speaking. Al Miller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Born and raised in West Virginia. Right. By God. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I've only been in the Springfield since 1964. Mm -hmm. But since coming up here, I run into Boots Johnson, who's the first man playing organ. Mm -hmm. He's the first man that I went into as a musician. <laughs> then I went down to the field and I got in with those musicians down there. And as a jazz musician jazz, or as a music? Jazz, jazz musician mm -hmm. down at the field. Rather than a marching band. No, they were a marching band when on the job. Mm -hmm. But then in the evening they went out and played at night. You know? And had fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. had fun. Played Right. Yeah, I, I have a lot of nice musicians. And you've been playing jazz around the various folk? Around Springfield, I started out at the, oh, what's the name of that? It was the oldest, I guess about the oldest motel in Springfield, up here on Main Street. Fairfax? Well, Fairfax, well, that's, that's where I started well, out well, when I really? first came. in 1964. I didn't know they ever had music in there. Yeah, that's where I started. And uh, these big well, what, time, did, what did you have there, Al? Just organ and, 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 and sax. He had a sideman play the drums. That's when the yeah. sideman first come out and the mm. drum. Yeah. And that's that's all we had. Boots. Boots Johnson. Yeah, Boots Johnson. Okay, okay, here you are, dear. That's coming through good. Well. Yes, it is. Very yeah. well. Okay. Uh oh, I'm next. You're next. <laughs> uh -huh, you're the next one on the table. <laughs> well, I. Name. Your really name. Didn't, uh, name. Man. Oh, Bill Stanback. <laughs> Stanback. Born and raised in Phillipsburg, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Where? Phillipsburg, Ohio. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I started on trumpet when I was about five years old. <laughs> and I uh, studied through school. And uh, my first job was really playing trumpet with the uh, band at the old swing bar in Dayton. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that or not. But, uh, I'm sure Bob remembers a drummer by the name of Ralph Ballou, and uh, he was the first band to work with. And then I sat in with Carl Taylor's big band, <coughs> all up to the time I went into the service. Did you play the band Cleve with it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't really pick up bass until I got into the service, so when I was overseas. The end of the war, well, I got transferred into the special service unit, which was playing uh, backup for the shows coming overseas, USO shows. And the uh, first show I went out with was the Great Day show. And I had been playing trumpet up to that time, but I decided to ask the sergeant if I could check out a bass from the spot. <laughs> so he let me have a bass, and I got an old hand crank uh, Victrola. <laughs> and he had some Woody Herman, 75 uh, RPM Woody Herman record. Like that. <laughs> so I took that bass and locked myself up in the room for a couple of weeks and tried to play with some of the records. Well, about the end of that two weeks, a uh, bass man on the Great Day Show was leaving. He had enough points come on. So the uh, or CO, he came around, he found out that I was practicing with that bass. He says, well, pack it up, you're heading out show, said, what show? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he sent me out and uh, joined the Great Day Show, and uh, I don't know whether you remember an actress by the name of Jean Berry. She had a sister by the name of Wendy Berry, and uh, Wendy
and they had a band at that time too. But, um, but Gene was the star in the stage show, Great Day stage show. <coughs> but uh, played, uh, the bass man who was leaving, he uh, played that job that night, and I stood and st sit there beside him and watched him. And I didn't even know the string out of tune. <laughs> The strings on the bass. <clears throat> he spent half the night with me after the show, showing me how to bow a couple of uh, notes that had to be bowed in the score. And uh, the rest of the job, that I had to play. <laughs> so, uh, next night, then I played the great bass show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they was real happy with me. I kind of shocked. <laughs> but that was my first bass job. And, uh, after that, I played several shows. Finally, had enough time to come home from overseas. And I uh, started Wittenberg College here in Springfield, and, and uh, I met all of the finest musicians in Springfield at that time uh, when I started school up here. Not only in the college, but out with everybody else. I was uh, a very busy person I was in school, playing a lot of jobs. Worked with fine uh, musicians like Bob Gallagher, Don Rossigan, Johnny Dessinger, Bob Weir, and uh, Al Miller. Al Miller and right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, when you were at Wittenberg, did you get any technical training or musical? Yes, background? I majored in music. Major I majored music. in uh, piano and bass. Mm -hmm. And I uh, also picked up the trumpet again and played in the marching band a couple of years. When they had a marching band. When they had a marching yeah. band, yeah. Did you away. What so happened to that? I really don't know. Well, what happened to the music school? I've asked, I've asked that time and the, time. Did the marching band disappear at the time the music school no. went down? No, no. Long no. Before, I think long the time before. Long, huh? long time before the music school disappeared. Well, the old music school. Yeah, which was two houses. Yes, yeah. we, very, we, very we had, uh, we housing. took we took all our um, music courses in them old houses. Uh, they had a series. good marching band. Real good, man. Yes, yeah. we did. We had a good marching band. Fritz Hawker was the director. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Fritz, Fritz, well, was, well, Fritz was the past well, Fritz was also my bass he, teacher. He played a little bit. <laughs> little string. Just like you. And, uh, <laughs> He's a fine fiddle player. Oh, yeah. he was. Well, violin was his major. Yeah, yes, that was his major. But yeah. he, he, uh, he worked with me on bass. He taught me a lot. Uh, Fritz Holker was quite a figure in Springfield for many, many years. Yeah. yeah. He was, did he play the symphony? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. sir, right. Yes. Right. For years. Was he concert master or not? No, I don't know. No, remember. but uh, I he think was he was principal. Oh. He also First played with the Columbus Symphony. No. Okay, Bob Ware, you were the okay. next leader in the band here. Yeah, my name is Bob Ware. I'm president of the Musicians Union. And I think I've played with every musician around this territory in my time, because I started out when I was, uh, my dad got me the first set of drums when I was four years old. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> and I had a, a long-suffering mother. <laughs> I had a cousin. Did they stay married? Yeah. They yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, they, uh, I had a cousin that was uh, president of the Musicians Union, George Bowser, I think oh, you yes. remember him. Yeah. Yeah. And he had a band. How do you spell Bowser? B O W S E R. B O W S E R. That was that kind the of transcription. Of people that need these things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, one time his drummer had a six bell and he didn't get couldn't get anybody so he come and got me. I was five years old. Oh my! And I went down <laughs> and played with his band. And uh, uh, that time on I started playing and when I was about seven I, my mother wanted me to take up piano. So I started on piano and I missed a couple lessons, I mean a couple practices, and she made me quit. So then I went on to take up clarinet and I took from John Poland for seven years. I know you know yes. John Poland. Yes. Seven years on clarinet. And I started playing clarinet and saxophone. And uh, you got a wide, wide well, background. Uh, and then in, in later years, my teeth went bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to have, have them pulled. And I couldn't get my uh, back to blowing again, so I went back to bro. I went back to playing drums. <laughs> Anybody and can play drums. I could go on and on with some of the great musicians that come out of this town. There was uh, 
some of the greatest musicians that ever hit the big time was out of this town. And one of them was Earl Warren. Yeah. He played uh, in a high school band with me. We used to march down the old south. Freddie Martin? Huh? Or Freddie Martin? Yeah, Freddie Martin. Or Freddie come from the K.P. Home over here. I heard right. that Woody Herman came from there. I don't know about Woody Herman. But for the guy who played sax with him, Saxy Mansfield played with Woody Herman. He was from here. But there were some great musicians come come from this town. It was just great. And uh, uh, Earl Warren played lead alto with Count Basie for years, years. And he's recently was back in town. I don't know whether he's here or not, but uh, he played a concert out here at uh, at uh, with uh, Lido. Johnny Lido out mm -hmm. here at the old, John, old uh, Davy Moore Park just a few years back. Yeah. And I, they asked me as the president of the Musicians Union to introduce him. And I introduced him out there. And we remembered the old times when we used to march on down the, the old tracks, they had streetcar tracks. Streetcar tracks. And, and we had a march on them things, and, yeah. and uh, it, was, it was really rough to march along on them days. But the, uh, Joe Boxer was was the teacher of that band. About what era are we talking about? What this is back in the 30s. Who did you say, Boxer? Yeah, Phil Boxer. Phil Boxer. Oh, I Phil remember Boxer. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Five O. Five O. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tape recorder. That's <laughs> two minutes of. 12. We could go on and on, Mary. Well, we but might uh, well go uh, on and on. But that's very interesting. But it's time now to play Old Lang Syne, right. which we'll do. It's midnight. Almost.
yourself, sir. You're on tape. Yeah. My name is uh, Keith Dolbear, and uh, I'm a native of Springfield uh, for quite a few years now. <laughs> uh, I recall my first experience with a, uh, a union band in this area. Uh, my brother was playing trumpet at the time with Paul Smithley and he sort of thing. And uh, at one time, they had a, 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 a noon gig at the Shawnee Hotel for one of the luncheon clubs, and his piano man couldn't show for that. He couldn't get off work. So uh, my brother volunteered my service, and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we got along pretty well, and uh, so Smitley asked me that he said, we were playing down at Antioch. Uh, Saturday night, would you like to play? And uh, I said, well, sure, I'd like to play, but I wasn't in the union, you see. 
He said, nobody will catch us. So he told his piano man that this job was called off. And uh, so I, I started playing with that group. And at intermission time, in walked his piano man. And that was on a Saturday. And we had a, a local union meeting on Sunday. Uh -huh. That's when I joined. Yeah. <laughs> suddenly, you got very religion. suddenly. The band <laughs> contributed the money for me. I was only a sophomore in high school, and I was the youngest member of the local. <laughs> but uh, I'll never forget that experience. But I played with uh, a lot of the bands in this area: uh, Bobby Martin, Eddie Cato, uh, and quite a few others, and. Uh, had wonderful years back in the big band days. Those days are gone forever. During the big band days, you had big places to play, that played for large communities, large dances. We had large dance halls, uh, which are no longer in vogue, and uh, we traveled quite a bit. You couldn't get a whole lot of uh, work in the local area. So we would travel over into in Indiana, and Cincinnati and Donnie, uh, West Virginia, and so on. And uh, it, it led to my downfall because I had a steady job and I, uh, I had to be at work pretty early in the morning. We would get in from some of those long treks, uh, four or five o'clock in the morning. And by that, by that time, I was married and had a couple of kids. So uh, I had to. Quit. So I retired from the music game for 25 years and didn't get back into it until I retired from my How job. many people became professional musicians who could, in those days when you were playing, could support themselves and their families? Uh, very few. Only, only if you could get in the uh, big time. And uh, of course that was, it took a lot of talent to do that and, and good breaks. You had to have a little luck too. But so really, how much different is it today? Well, it's pretty much the same today, I think. But I was only interested in what was called jobbing uh, as a musician. We just play on the weekends as separate parties and so on. So today, all you can do is uh, get work for combos, small groups. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's all going to be afforded by the citizens. Right. So uh, it's been quite an experience. And it, it makes a good sideline, but it's uh, very tough to make a living out of it. Very tough. I believe that the people I've interviewed have said, I sell draperies on the side, or I mm -hmm. teach, or I do a number of things. Right. But only one or two, really, in Columbus. Make your living as a, as a right. mm -hmm. Have you ever heard Bob Allen trio? Oh yes. Aren't they great? Well, he he does play full time, does he not? Yeah, he's he's down to a couple of nights a week. Oh dear. And where he is, I'm not sure, but uh, he let he's had several long running Oh yeah, that's But he is tremendous. Well, he is it's very innovative and good chords. He's about as good as George Shearing. Yeah, I think so. And both of them are blind, right. incidentally. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yeah. So, well, as Al Miller said that he doesn't read notes, I'm sure that uh, both Shearing and Bob Allen, the first of them, well, do not read notes, they may feel notes on the brain. Yes, I think they use very often. Mm -hmm. what, um, what memories they must have. Tremendous. And, uh, they, can, they can play very difficult arrangements with groups. And it's perfect. Do you have any feeling about the influence of the union in relation to yesterday and today's music? Well, <clears throat> I have some feelings about it. Uh, our, our union, our national union, <laughs> our international union has changed its policy a lot. We used to require uh, organizations and uh, dance halls and so forth that hired musicians either to use completely union musicians or they, we would put them on the blacklist and 
they could only get non-union positions to play. So I, I think about 10 years ago, they had to back off of that stand because of, they were afraid of uh, violating the uh, Wagner Act and free trade and so on. So we, we have lost a lot of the uh, power, you might say, that we used to have. Is there anything, um, was there anything caused perhaps by the rock uh, musicians or the, uh, television and radio and cassettes? I, rock, disco, country western. All that has changed business. Those folks are not union musicians, are they? A whole lot of them are. Well, Most of them are, oh, really? but you hear in the big time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. But, uh, $25 a couple. That's cheap. That's it. It's like every other business, it, it changes rapidly. Yeah, but the still, uh, perhaps there's an upsurge up in uh, interest in big band music or uh, li the livability of big band music. There are two or three new radio stations on the FM band. Yeah. We've had to do a big Well, I stuff. live in that hope, you know, but uh, I said we've been so disappointed for so long. Yeah, it was. We, we think uh, there, there are rumors always spreading that big band here is coming back, big bands are coming back. And well, I'm not at all sure that history exactly ever repeats itself, such as come back exactly to where right. it was. But you're right. Might be a, a revival. There, there might be a revival, but uh, Wind and Hill and Big Bang's got it together. Oh dear. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. Can anyone today really start off and, and work without belonging to the union? Oh yes, yes. That's what I say. Uh, the union doesn't wield as much influence or as much power. In London, at the, the Red Brick Inn, there is a group that plays once a month for the last two seasons, and they enjoy themselves immensely. Maybe once a year they have a job. Uh, they wouldn't be bothered by the unusual no. in terms of what they want to do. No. There would be nothing about that. No. There are quite a few through the country. There are quite a few practice groups like that. Did you call them practice groups? Oh, yeah, older time musicians that just get to mm -hmm. gather to play for their own amazement. Sure. Huh? Yes, indeed. Their own amazement, indeed. Uh, <laughs> That's one of the things that makes a difference between you, what you folks did tonight and an amateur group. Makes a big difference. Uh, uh, Elmer, do you have any comments you want to toss in? We had a good connection over at Springfield Country Club, and we played Street the King there. I'll sit over here, so to speak. We play there about every yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. About 10, 12 years ago. Billy Burke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot the business. Yeah, Billy Burke had the band before he came. But Andy was around here for a long time. Swing and swing with Sammy Kay, Jeff and Dirk with Billy. Yeah, Burke. I was with Jeff and Dirk. I forgot all about it. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. And I like a beer. I'd like a cup of coffee. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Billy Burke died young, too. Yeah. Yes, he did. He had TB, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he, that's what he died of TB. Uh, Running their family. I think. Oh, here we go. Wonderful. I, I played with him. I played saxophone then. Yeah, I played in, in the saxophone section. I played saxophone. Sandy hair. Sandy hair. On the top shelf, next to the refrigerator, top shelf. Yes, we the top shelf. You remember Buddy Young? Yeah. <laughs>
I'm with, I've had more trouble. I had more trouble with him, well, and I think every minute, any huh? Tell us a little bit about that. Buddy Young. Buddy Young. He was, uh, a, was he a nationally known? He, uh, he, well, he, 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 <laughs> he was a guy that had the brain. If he just would use it right, he could have went places. Mm -hmm. But he, he was a businessman, and he knew how to operate. Mm -hmm. But he would not pay anybody the bills. He wouldn't pay his man. Oh. He, he, uh, uh, I know one guy, which, where he hadn't paid for six months. And then he wouldn't pay his dues in the union and wanted us to keep him in. Oh, I had no. to finally kick him out. And boy, he was mad at me for about six months. He wouldn't even speak to me. Well, there wasn't <laughs> nothing else I could do. If you belong to a club, you're going to pay dues. You're not going to be in it. If you're going to belong to a musician union, you're going to pay your dues. Uh -huh. And uh, he just you know, wouldn't pay no bills. He uh, run an electrical uh, business. Uh, he didn't know anything about electrical. His dad did. <laughs> and he, uh, he wouldn't pay his light bill. And they'd come up and shut his meter off. <laughs> After they leave, he'd have it right, turned right back on. He, he knew well, enough I, about it to do that. Yeah, he would have made a good shot for a well, well, hell, he had it. He went one of the best bands. Yes, he was smart. But he young. Bob Yaler was his real name. Well, he had quite an operation. He, had a, he really had a big band. I remember he had a oh, big hey. parked out on East High Street. You know, you know who bought that, don't you? <laughs> you know who bought it. No. No. You did. The state. You paid taxes in the state. The state bought it for him. That woman hey, stole it. What woman stole it? Oh, you know, she you stole it. She stole two million dollars and, and give it all to him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, That's when he went in the booking. He got a booking agency. Yeah, but I know when she was. When he was. She you was know what he offered? Bob, Bob uh, Circle to play with him? 22000 a year when, when she was stealing that money and giving it to him. And he was paying some guys that money. And he traveled all over. He always paid me well, and I would just... Yeah, if you got paid, did you get paid? Oh, yeah. I told him, I said, I don't fool around. I want the money. And uh, he would call me up maybe on Thursday and say, how would you like to spend the weekend in, uh, 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 out in Colorado? Yeah. And he'd fly that. He'd fly that. Oh, he'd fly it. Pay it all the way and... and now you know he didn't have no money. He, 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 didn't, he never had no money like that. He never made that. This woman, was, she got she got all the money. And when they finally caught up with him, she got sentenced to prison, which she got nine hundred thousand dollars, nine hundred dollars a month pension from the government while she's in prison. Oh, she retired with the pension on the way to the on the way to the pension. And he he only served he only served two months, and he got out. Yeah, well, Two I, months. I figured he would. Yeah, tricky, yeah he was. He, he was knows the ropes. Oh, my. You know what he's doing now? He's down in Florida with a big band. He's again. got a band. Got a big band down in Florida. No, no, no. <laughs> and See, he had he had one of the best. The show with yeah, one, a wonderful show. Uh -huh. Well, it's, it's kind of corny, but. Uh, well, he, I he, think there's he, enough people down there that were in the big band group or that era. That are still looking for dance halls. There's a lot of them. Well, there are some dance halls. Yeah. Especially in Texas. Well, yeah, in Texas. Well, yeah, Texas. In, in Florida, yeah. you can get all kind of work playing in Florida. You can't make much money. No, that, it's a There are too many retired musicians that yeah. yeah. play for dance halls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's work down there if you want to get out and yeah. work. Bronikin's working again down there. He started working again. I played with a trio down there. Yeah. In Florida? Yeah. yeah. They can get more money. Than they can yeah. So we played the Naples uh, uh, Yacht Club several times. Yeah. And the Two Chop Yacht Yeah. What is the big ball? And he went over and bought the Ramada. The first thing he did was close up the bar or the restaurant. He ain't got no bar or restaurant. He didn't want no hotel. Oh, what what city, city is this? I think it's a front. Right here. I think it's a front of some kind, don't you? I don't know. But my uh, mm -hmm. friend of mine is, is the night auditor out there, Barry, Don Barry. He says he's making all kind of money just renting mm -hmm. rooms. Well, I heard it was kind of a gangster owner. Well, that may, yeah, that may be. That may be. You have to know. make money one way or another. You were saying, uh, Bob, that Springfield had some of the very best musicians you remember hearing 
in the olden days, and you were yeah. starting to list them, and then we had to cut you off. Yeah, I was it. talking about Earl Warren was one of the best that mm -hmm. ever come out of this town. He, he was left here when he was first got out of high school and went with a big band. What did he play? Satchmo. Mm -hmm. No, he played alto. alto. He was the lead alto man for Count Basie. His, his brother, Leroy, Leroy played was drums. a policeman. He played trombone. He, got killed. he, he was killed. a good trombonist. And he played and he got killed yeah, while he up was on, on duty through an absolutely stupid accident yeah. when the door in a well, car flew open. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 He was a really nice guy. How long guy. ago was that? I don't know. Oh, that's that. 20 years, maybe? Oh, my oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 It's been, been a good while ago. I, mean, I, I knew Leroy. But Earl Warren was back in town just mm -hmm. a couple years ago and he played out there at the old Davy Moore Park and the Johnny Lyle had yeah. him out there. And I introduced him to the, to the people and uh, that's the first time I seen Earl for a good while. He was in Switzerland, he living in Switzerland. But now I, I hear he's back there living again. And they named that street out there, they changed the name to June Street out there to Warren Boulevard. <laughs> that's Boulevard? No Boulevard too. Well, I think it? Warren Warren Boulevard or Warren Warren <laughs> something. Anyhow, that's where the old Warren family we lived, you know, for years out there on June Old June Street. And uh, that's right. <laughs> well, I, uh, Woody Fansler, the fine trumpet man that used to play with Cato, he went with uh, uh, one of the big bands on the West Coast. Uh, Ray Anthony. That? Ray Anthony. All right. Very fine that trumpet man. Good band. Oh, yeah. He's still playing. Bob, a little bit about what was the status of the union? When did you get into being a union official? Well, I started on the executive board first thing. I How long board. ago? When? Oh, my gosh, back in the 1950s, early oh. 50s or 40s. I was on the executive board for a long while. Then, uh, well, what? You were, were a union member before that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, what was the status of the union, let's say, in the Maybe you're not aware of it, really, but in the 30s or early 40s. Well, they were, and I tell you, during the Depression, uh, the Union was still in existence, but the people were out playing for anything they could get. And then I, I tell you, scale was only scale was maximum. It's supposed to be three dollars, three dollars a night or something like no, that. No, it was five when I was. Uh, was it? Well, it was five. It was, you know, that, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm, I'm remembering. Because when I was in college, I had to join the union in order to play with this big band yeah. I was playing with. And we played Saturday nights in the armory. We had about a 15-piece group. Mm -hmm. And I always resented it because we got $5 for playing five yeah. hours. Yeah. Five hours? Yeah. Five yeah. dollars was standing yeah. for three hours. We got five hours. Well, and, <laughs> and, and the union representative, and who was oh, that no. guy in Chicago really that was the bad that's guy? Can you imagine how we were? Trillo? The Trillo. Yeah. The Trillo. Well, anyway, you know, they, they always had goons out there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What impressed us is that. He was and tough. these guys always took a buck every night time that you played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was racketeering. It wasn't easy. You call it racketeering. Yeah, it wasn't I, easy. Think well. that, I think that aspect of it's been pretty well cleaned up. Oh, yeah. You know, it's yeah. hard to remember like yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's all, well, unions are all. Well, what, what was the status when you got involved locally, though? It was pretty straightforward, wasn't it, by then? <laughs> his, it wasn't. his politics, yes. Huh? His politics were straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was. Uh, well, well was it, you still had this kind of hierarchy out of Chicago running the... No, it the runs out of New York. New York. Out of New York by New the time York. you got into it. Yeah. Well, but Petrillo... Been, Petrillo was out of Chicago. Petrillo, yeah, he was... He was uh, a kind of a racketeer, but he did do some very good things for the union, and uh, he, he he did some real good things. He started the transcription plan. Did he? he was the instigator of that, and the pension plan. His brother, they see they have a pension plan in the union now. If you, if you want one of these places to play, like steady jobs, they they pay a pension so plan. They get a good pension. Oh. It's called a Petrilla pension. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, a lot, of them, a lot of them pay into that, and they get they get good pension when they retire. But uh, right now, <laughs> we got one of the most honest guys in there that you what we want for the president. And the other guy was in there. His name was Futiablo, big Italian, and he was one of these kind of guys that wanted to be a dictator. And finally, they got tired, and this time they voted him out. And I'd be darned if he didn't 
uh, I was there when we voted, you know, at the convention when you vote mm -hmm. the president in. And everything was on the up and up, and he got the Na National Labor Relations Board and said it was crooked, and he fought it. And uh, uh, he's still fighting it, and this guy's been in office ever since uh, two years ago. And I got a letter the other day that, that he was going to move in and take over the office. Just move in. What, Fantano? Futiago, yeah. F-U-E-N-T-A-B-L-A, Futiago. I never could pronounce it. One time I was on it, I was I was ahead of the <coughs> committee. Uh, Credit, uh, credential committee, and I had to get up and give the speech at the end. And he, and I got to his name. I couldn't pronounce his name. Pretty I said, "I'm going to call you Vic." His name was Vic. Vic. <laughs> he's a clarinet player. Wasn't he? Oh, he played. Oh, he played good clarinet. Yeah. Yeah. But then, then what, was, what have you seen in the way of uh, changes in the musical? demands in this local area. I mean, is it worse now than it used to be, or is it better? Where, where are you? It's country. This, this area here is strictly country. Yeah. And uh, mostly non-union. That's what I'm running up against now. Is, yeah, uh, country guys are not. Uh, no, uh, not like around the, here now. And the rock people weren't either. Nashville is full. Now, Nashville yeah. is, is, is strictly strong union. Right. Know? And when they come in here, they, they, I, I don't have no trouble with them. They get, I get the work dues on. They send a contract in. It's these little bands around here that that, that, that uh, give you a hard time. And you have to face it. It's strictly country around here. And uh, they're they're finding work. Oh yeah, sure. The, the other the I real get jazz the, I get the Bell Fountain paper from Bell Fountain. I have for ever since I've been president because I can keep on top of what's going on. See, that's my territory up there too. No. Instead of having to travel it for all the time, I, I get the paper and then I can tell who's playing. And a lot of time I catch them, but mostly every place now is they put their ads in country western, country velvets, country this, country that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's well, all it's all. Marty, if part of, part of an answer to your question would be, do the change in laws and the crackdown on drinking against driving, this has made a tremendous change in the entertainment in our end of the business. There aren't as many dances held. And uh, there aren't as many uh, bands hired at uh, receptions and things like that because uh, they, they've, they've had to go dry. Plus the fact that disc jockeys no, get disc a lot jockeys. of work cutting musicians out of work. Disc jockeys. And, you know, the thing I, that gets me about disc jockeys, though, is that from what I hear of the fees that they get, they could just about hire a live band. Well, Almost, you know, right. It's oh, ridiculous. They charge sometimes more, more than a live band. Now, you got one out to Northwood Hills? This I know. Uh, I, I resent that. It's yeah. yeah. terrible. Yeah. Who's that? I don't know who who well, don't the know. disc jockey they, they is, but we can clamp down on them some but by going to, uh, uh, what's the name of that? Ascamp, and they'll come in and, and charge Start them a fee. Charging for every, yeah. everything yeah. they play, yeah. which they are not paying. I'm sure. No. You know, you know what that is. That, yeah, but the American the society the composers. Huh? Uh, the fellow had a big hand in that. Who? Uh, he may have. The fellow had a hand in getting Ascamp. He may have. I don't know. He may have. I don't know. But. But the point is, whenever you play, play a tune, and you are playing for money, and it's a tune which is registered with ASCAP, mm -hmm. there has to be a fee paid for that. Yeah, that's right. And, Even if you and play, these okay. disc jockeys, these disc jockeys, right? I'm sure, never pay any of this. I well, if you, if you can get, do, maybe, but if you can get their names and turn them in no. to ASCAP, they'll come I down. remember when Yannis put speakers in. Off of their FM. Yeah, you can't do that you know, without no, paying. No, well, asking. they had to pay a fee. Yeah, they, they had to pay a fee. Yeah, well, they were cracking down on it for oh, a while. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's valid yeah. anymore. Do you? Yeah, they do it. Well, there are people going around listening. But okay. yeah. well, what burns me about disc jockeys? That is so. It's their music. Yeah. They. Aren't they one? I just wondered what they would do if the musicians hadn't made the records for them. The only thing they could do is play a record machine. Well, that's right. Uh, but uh, they, they act very And they don't do that too well sometimes. Well, they can 
Yeah. Oh, they come out with these lights, flashing lights, no. uh, all kind of equipment, and uh, they really do a job. But uh, <laughs> I, I can't see it myself. I, I, I like light. When I go in a restaurant, what is the word for the disco? Disco, yeah. Oh, yeah. A uh, friend of mine was a boat racer, and he started a disco, and where did he start that place? In off of Canada. And we went up mm -hmm. the first or second night, and it was so loud. You lose your ears. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Well, that's a, that's yeah. a problem I had with these rock bands when they were in these hotels. They called me up maybe at 2 o'clock in the morning from the hotel and said, you come out here and straighten this band out, we can't do anything with them. You go out there and tell them, you're too loud, you want to cut, they won't do it. No way. <laughs> no. I tried to tell them, I said, look, this man's paying you. He, he, he's he got a contract, he wants the music the way he wants it. And they wouldn't listen. Know the they, they don't, they, they can't play without that thing turned sky high, that's we're all. Probably deaf by the time they you know, they can't hear it anymore because they're already deaf. Yeah. Yeah. they got to have it loud. I yeah. think that's part of it. I'll never forget the night we playing up Springfield Country Club and uh, uh, we were house band out there. I started to tell about this. And we had uh, electric piano that I was playing and uh, electric bass. And Eldon Bailey, do you remember? Oh Eldon? yeah, I knew Eldon real well. Uh -huh. Well, he resented uh, amplified instruments. He, he wanted, uh, we didn't like that. And he kept telling us, we were playing downstairs in the yeah. residence room. Mm -hmm. It's a rather intimate dining room, but uh, uh, he'd keep telling us, don't play so loud, don't play so loud. Well, he was wearing a hearing aid, and yeah. a lot of times yeah. that causes a roar, you know, yeah. just amplification. So we would turn it down, you know, and try to play softer, but gradually, drunk. Freddie would start playing a little louder, you know, and <laughs> we'd turn up our by Freddie Peer. <laughs> So he was dancing there with his wife one night. He came along and we were plugged into the wall and he jerked the plug out. <laughs> we, we were dead. No piano, no bass. <laughs> Freddie was playing. He was, he was out there in the bar. <laughs> I'll never forget that. He stopped us cold. <laughs> El Elton was quite a guy. He was, yeah, he was a He played flute, you know, with the symphony. Yeah, he huh? was good flute. Yes. Yeah. He, well, I went to school with him. But he was, he was a character. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a character. Draw that old great uh, man. roaster with that great big dog sitting on <laughs> in the front seat with him. He was a great man. Yeah, he was a, he was a <laughs> nice guy. But uh, things have changed so much changed in, a lot. in the music business. It's, sometimes it makes me almost cry. <laughs> Well, the potential for big bands is just gone, pretty much, you know. Yeah. Can't afford them. Well, Mary was asking about that. Do you think they're going to come back? There's always that rumor, you know, but I don't think it's going to happen. Well, I think most of the fellows aren't willing to travel either. Anymore. They don't want to, well, the fellows well, that play that kind of music are older fellows. They don't want to travel. The reason I asked this was a personal situation. My son was married last summer, and there was a rock band, a duo with electronic keyboard hired. And then they're opposing them are Marty Cook and Walter Anderson, who's a PhD and uh, a doctor of organ kind of theory. Uh, anyway, it's <laughs> high up in the academics. And come the wedding procession, Walter played, sheep may safely graze. <laughs> we, we got them an electro, electric piano. So anyway, they, the, these two, Marty and Walter played proper conventional music, and then they started playing jazz, and they put in a proper rock band that start and play. And uh, <laughs> after it was over, people kept saying, who were those funny old guys who played good music? <laughs> <laughs> and David called Sunday today and said that there was a rock group in Mount Hood where they were skiing, and when the rock group played, everybody quit. That was the same group that played it this way. Oh. But then when the conventional big band music came on, they all came back and sure. danced and had a good time. So it maybe was, it was very yeah. interesting. It's, a, it's coming they, back some, Mary. Yeah. Uh, so now it you probably go up, will be like it was. 
No, but you grew up in some of the districts now. The northern part of Ohio has got a lot of big bands, and they're they're doing real well up in there. Canton, Ohio, yeah. and Akron. Well, there's a lot of good Dixieland up there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, yeah. You remember that Dixieland band you seen in Cleveland? Uh, wasn't that, wasn't what that? was his name? A funny guy. Yeah, uh, that was outstanding Dixieland. Oh, Sam, it? Sam. Oh, man. Sam. I got I got a record of it. Yeah. And Sam Fingers. Sam Fingers. Yeah, yeah. Sam Fingers. That's terrific. Yeah. Oh man, that was good. good. And they was older guys too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, now uh, this afternoon we played the wedding reception and a lot of fun people there, and we played conventional. Yeah. And we thought, well, they aren't dancing too well. These people were talking. They, they were enjoying their own company, and they didn't dance a whole lot. But uh, we thought, well, maybe if we play a rock team, the young people would get out there and dance. So I think some of the these people weren't uh, in their teens or 20s. They were a little bit old, and they were in their mid thirties, I would oh. say, the, the, the bride and groom, mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't interested in the rock at all. No, mm -hmm. nobody mm -hmm. came out on that. Uh, there are bands who look, who look at the hair coloring of the people in the audience and play accordingly. Oh well, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, at, at wedding receptions, you have this problem. Uh, uh, you've got the people who want rock music, the young, younger generation, and their parents and so on, they're, yeah. they're there, and they, they don't split. want it. They That's want right. the best. I usually find out, yeah. Keith, that when they call, they, you know, I get a lot of calls on mm -hmm. weddings. You um, ask, don't you? Yeah, I, type they want. yeah, and then they want to hear the tapes, so I got tapes that are pretty, you know, all mm -hmm. the bands, and I said, mm -hmm. well, you can come out and listen to the tapes and pick the band you want. Mm -hmm. But you'd be surprised. They want a whole standard, most of them. I think it's swinging. Yeah, that yeah. and uh, but the young kids, they don't dance too much. The older people get out there and dance yeah, at weddings. Yes, that's, uh, true. Yeah. that's true. And the mothers and fathers do the dancing, and the aunts and uncles and all that. And the young people are off to themselves uh, talking or something. But uh, that's what we find. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about the Wind and Hill kind of music that's coming out on tape? I don't know. What's that? Well, it's a brand of um, tape, of records and tapes, cassettes which are nicely played, clear, uh, well-played piano, for instance, good technique, uh, clean performance. Very but bland. They go around the circle of chords very nicely and smoothly, but they aren't going anywhere. They go just to, you know, to, to, to C, to F, all around the circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they're through, they kind of do a little arpeggio, and there they are. Mm -hmm. It's it, as my son said, it is music to not listen to. <laughs> well, it's music, Muzak with it's a graduate degree. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quality Muzak. It's, you know, it's a little better, but you don't need to listen to it. And if you do, you won't know what you've heard. Right. Something like progressive? Yeah, no. 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 Uh -uh. Uh, it's, uh, I don't <laughs> well, your sign-off piece would be played by Wind and Hill as a kind of a a nice kind of yeah, 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 that was done by Mrs. Firestone, wasn't it? What? I think it was written by Mrs. Firestone. The, uh, well, uh, the lady that, the grand dame of the Firestone tire was very musical, and I think she wrote that. Oh, good too. Huh? Well, I think it was picked up to pacify mm -hmm. Mrs. Firestone that she was not recognized, and suddenly then it becomes <laughs> a good tune. But because she had written it before, no one recognized it. They thought they were being condescending to this nice okay. lady. Well, music is a wonderful thing. It's an international language you're not going to get away from. No, but uh, I played all my life. I mean, ever since I was four years old. <laughs> yeah, that's I got a picture of it. You're a child prodigy, huh? What? Yeah, I have a big picture in the paper. It's all, I got to have that laminated. It's torn to pieces now. Uh, uh, me, uh, yeah, I'll put that together. In the, there are yeah. wonderful, wonderful scrapbooks. Well, Johnny Dessner started off when he was a young kid. Do you remember Jay Warren Young? Oh, my gosh, yeah. He was a child star. Yeah. Boy, they, they spoiled that kid. Yeah, yeah, they spoiled <laughs> he him. He was the centerpiece of the big band. <laughs> 
They put him right out in front. He plays yeah. solos all the time. What did he play? Drums. Drums. Oh. Jay Warren Young. <laughs> Was he a Springfielder? Uh-huh. Oh, that name sounds so familiar. Jay Warren yeah. Young. Uh, Who did I he play with? Well, different like groups. Kato different groups around town. No, it no. was before them. It was oh. when I was pretty young. Yeah, it's. Uh, he's, he's I, mean, long I long. don't know what he's still around. Or? Oh, I think he's long gone. He'd be pretty well, old. Musical talent starts very young, and when you go to the Springfield Symphony, if you sit in the back row or even behind the back row, you will find when the house lights dim, and Mr. Farita walks on the stage. There's this little character, just a little bit higher than the seats of the chairs, stands up, and he goes, <laughs> and he starts to com to conduct, and he is very good, except he uh, he's exactly on pitch, I mean exactly on time, uh -huh. and he softens the uh -huh. orchestra, or he brings them up, you know. And he gets the most out of that, that group. Oh, he has a, yes, he does. He gets. He knows how in yeah. such a short time. I don't well, understand how he does it. Huh? Yeah, John Freer, he's a nice guy, real, real. Oh, it's peach. But he peaceful. knows how to use 60, 59 and one half minutes out of a rehearsal hour. I'm still having trouble with that, with that case of Mark Poster. Man, I don't know how it works. I'm telling you, that's getting to be awful sticky. It, it's What's a that about? Mark Poster. Oh, Mary, something. Yeah. Yeah. I am.